Since Todd and Ted joined Berkshire, the market cap of the company has doubled and cash on, cash on hand is now nearly $100 billion. It doesn't look like Todd and Ted have been allocated new capital on the same relative basis. Why? Well, actually, I would say they have been. Uh, I think we started out with $2 billion. Uh, I could be wrong, but my, my memory was $2 billion with, uh, with Todd when he came with us. And, uh, so there have been substantial ad additions. And of course, their own capital has grown just because, you can say, in a sense, they retain their own earnings. So um, yeah, they are managing a proportion of Berkshire's capital, or and or uh, also measured by marketable securities. I think they're managing a proportion that's, that's pretty similar, maybe even a little higher than when each one of them entered, and Ted entered a year or two after after Todd. Uh, um, you know, they. I think they would agree that it's tougher to run 10 billion than it is to run one or two billion. I mean, it, it, your expectable returns go down as you get into larger sums. But the decision to bring them on uh, has been terrific. I mean, they have they've done a good job of managing marketable securities. They they made more money than I would have made with that same what is now 20 billion, but originally was two billion, uh, and they've been of terrific help in a variety of ways uh, beyond just money management. So that decision, I'll, you know, uh, that's been a very, very good decision. And, and they are, they're smart, they're good at, they have money minds, they are good specifically at investment management, but they're absolutely first-class human beings, and they really fit, fit Berkshire, so that was, uh, Charlie gets uh, credit for for uh, Todd. He met Charlie first, and and I'll claim credit for Ted. And I think we both feel very good about the decisions. Charlie, well, I think the shareholders are very lucky to have them because they both think like shareholders. Totally. After all, it came up that way, and that is not the normal way headquarters employees think. Uh, it's a pretense that everybody takes on, but the reality is different. And these people really deeply think like shareholders, and they're young and smart and constructive, so we're all very lucky to have them around. Yeah, their mindset is 100 percent, what can I do for Berkshire, not what can Berkshire do for me? And believe me, you can spot that over time with people. And, and, uh, and on top of that, you know, they're very talented, but, but uh, you know, it's it's hard to find people young, ambitious, uh, very smart, uh, that don't put themselves first. And uh, I would, every experience we've had, they do not put themselves first, they put Berkshire first. And believe me, I can spot it uh, when people are extreme in one direction or other. Maybe I'm not so good around the middle, but, but uh, you've got, you couldn't have two better uh, people in those positions. But you can say, well, why don't you give them another 30 billion each or something? I don't think that would, I don't think that would improve their lives or their performance. They, they'll, they may be handling more as they go along, but the truth is, I'm, I've got more assigned to me than I can handle at the present time, as proven by the fact that we've got this 90 billion plus around. I think there are reasonable prospects for using it, but if you told me I had to put it to work today, I would not like the prospect. Charlie? Well, I certainly agree with that. It's a lot harder now than it was at times in the past.